All right, let's talk about the two images that just surfaced of the Avatar 360 over the last few days. These aren't promotional renders or stylized marketing visuals. They look like real practical shots of the drone, and that's exactly why they matter. When images stop trying to sell an idea and start showing a product as it actually exists, it usually means the design phase is over. Um, what we're seeing here feels finished, not experimental. Um, earlier leaks already suggested that this drone wasn't choosing between FPV and 360. It was trying to sit somewhere in between. These images don't change that story, but they finally show us how seriously DJI is taking that balance. Start with the frame. At a glance, it has familiar Sinuhoop DNA. Compact proportions, enclosed prop guards, and that understated gray finish we associate with modern DJI designs. But once you look closer, a few details completely change how this drone should be interpreted. The propellers are screwed in, not push on. That's not about durability or convenience, that's about consistency, screwed props. Lock into the exact same position every flight. For a 360 camera, that matters more than people realize. Tiny changes in airflow or vibration can introduce stitching artifacts or subtle instability in footage. This tells us immediately that DJI is prioritizing repeatability over quick swaps. Then there are the ducts. They're vented at the top rather than fully sealed. That allows heat to escape more efficiently, improves internal airflow, and reduces pressure buildup inside the frame. More importantly, it smooths the air passing through the drone, and turbulence is exactly the kind of thing a 360 camera exaggerates. Again, the priority here isn't speed, it's control. When you put those two decisions together, screwed on props and vented ducts, the intent becomes very clear. This drone isn't chasing aggressive FPV performance. It's chasing stability, predictability, and clean output. That brings us to FPV itself. FPV doesn't feel like the core strength of this drone. Everything about the design points towards smooth, repeatable motion rather than sharp, reactive flying. This doesn't look like a drone built for dives or freestyle. FPV feels more like an option you can use, not the reason the drone exists, even though Avatar is still in the name. Now look at the camera, because this is where DJI is quietly doing something very smart. From what we can see, the Avatar 360 uses a dual lens setup, one lens facing upward and one facing downward for full spherical capture. That part isn't surprising. What is surprising is how DJI appears to be handling non-360 footage. Instead of fixing the lenses in place and forcing everything through post, the entire camera module seems to rotate. Roughly 90 degrees, when you want standard footage, one of those lenses physically becomes the forward-facing camera. That's a big shift. Most 360 drones lock you into a single workflow. Capture everything in 360 and decide later how to frame it. Here, DJI seems to be giving creators a choice in the air. You can shoot 360 when you want it and switch to a traditional camera perspective when you don't. That flexibility fundamentally changes how this drone can be used. The controller reinforces that idea. Its design closely resembles DJI's recent RC lineup, and the feed shown on screen doesn't look like a stitch sphere or reframed 360 preview. It looks like a clean, normal camera feed that strongly supports the idea of a proper single lens mode. Somewhere in the middle of all this, pricing starts to tell its own story. Leaks from China suggest the Avatar 360 is being positioned quite aggressively, affordable by DJI standards. Once you factor in regional pricing differences, especially for the US and Europe, it naturally lands higher but still within reach for what it's offering, um, especially if it genuinely bridges FPV and 360 without forcing compromises. Uh, one of the images also quietly shows a three battery charging hub fully loaded that detail matters. DJI doesn't usually show accessories like that unless they're finalized. It also strongly suggests Fly More bundles will be available right from launch. When you step back and look at everything together, the frame design, airflow decisions, camera mechanics, controller behavior, pricing structure, and bundled accessories, this doesn't feel like a product that's still being figured out. It feels ready. And once a product feels ready, the next question isn't what it is anymore, it's when. 
This is where DJI's current launch activity becomes important. DJI has officially confirmed its next product launch, the RS5 set for January 15th. That date is locked, and while the RS lineup targets a different audience, the timing of that launch matters far beyond gimbals, because DJI doesn't launch products randomly. When DJI starts a launch cycle, the first announcement sets the rhythm, it reactivates attention, resets the narrative, and clears the runway. What usually follows is a sequence, not a long pause. RS5 on January 15th marks the start of that sequence, and when you look at the Avatar 360 through that lens, real images, finalized hardware, locked accessories, consistent messaging, it fits perfectly as a next step product. Not months away, not theoretical, just waiting for its slot. But the Avatar 360 isn't the only DJI product showing this late stage behavior right now. At the same time all of this is happening, the Osmo Pocket 4 is doing something very similar. Over the last few weeks, we've seen video footage that looks far more like official commercial material than a typical leak. Smooth motion, intentional framing, controlled presentation. Not rough concepts, not speculation. Um, when leaks start looking like marketing, it usually means decisions are already made. What's interesting is how DJI appears to be positioning the Pocket 4 visually. Uh, earlier images focused on rear and angled views showing larger vents and a heavier looking upper section. That naturally led many people to assume the Pocket 4 would be significantly larger than previous models. But then, the front view appeared. From that angle, the body still looks slim familiar. The grip doesn't suddenly turn into a bulky pro handle. The lower half still looks very much like a pocket camera. The difference shows up higher up in the gimbal head. From the back it looked chunky. From the front it looks restrained and balanced. That contrast isn't accidental, it's deliberate. Just like with the Avatar 360, DJI appears to be concentrating capability where it matters most, without changing how the product feels to use. Nah, strong indications suggest the camera system is stacked vertically rather than spread wide, adding depth and height instead of width. That explains why it looks more substantial from some angles and familiar from others, and the intent feels consistent now. DJI doesn't want the Pocket 4 to feel intimidating. Even if it delivers higher-end performance, it still needs to feel like a pocket. Simple, approachable, and easy to use. Put all of this together, and a pattern emerges. RS5 launches January 15th. Avatar 360 looks finished and positioned. Osmo Pocket 4 shows marketing-grade leaks and controlled presentation. These aren't isolated events, they're aligned. At this point, it feels less like speculation and more like anticipation. Not a question of if, but when. We're no longer waiting for ideas to form. We're waiting for announcements. Alright, this is it for now, and I see you in the next one.